On the other end, Milan held uh, at home by Verona. And obviously the stock headline is, oh, look, Ibra has the flu. There's no Ibra. And so Milan stink again. And they weren't very good. <laughs> I no Ibra, no party. Yeah, but just as important as Ibra's absence, I thought it was Benacer's absence. Yeah. And it was weird. He still seems to be kind of overlooked by a lot of people mm-hmm. because when Benacer's not there and you have to play that midfield with Shalinoglu and you know, or whatever, it just turns into... It turns into a serious problem, mm. um, and and yeah, I think he was suspended. He's going to be back at the weekend for the derby. I assume Ibra is going to be back for the derby as well, and I think this is a game that Inter are in serious danger of losing. And what do you? Totally. Why? Because I don't think Milan are as bad as people suggest they are, and I think. I think Conte, and it's still a derby, and I think Conte is going to be absolutely wound up about it. And Conte has decisions to make. You know, do you start Ericsson in the derby? In his second game, when, you know, does when he's such an influential figure, do you, do you bet him in or do you play it safe? Do you, you know, you've got a whole range of things. Do you go Vicino, Brozovic, Barella, which would be the, the standard thing to do if you wanted to play it safe and maybe think about Ericsson from the bench? He's got a lot of big calls to make. It's definitely a game where... Because, yes, Lukaku resolves a lot of problems, but Lautaro is going to be missed. I, okay, so I'm so here's my thing, right? Like, I watched Milan, and I, I thought that they were bad. Um, yeah. I, it's not that... My issue with Milan is that they depend on... All of a sudden, this whole tactic has been built around uh, Ibra, in the sense that there's no one else because there's no Piontek. I'm not sitting here telling you that Piontek <laughs> is the world's greatest striker. But you sort of need somebody to fill the role. Stop yeah, you, instead. Me, because there is a kid to fill the role. <laughs> Who? Leo? You didn't hear? The third generation of Maldini. Oh, God. Yes, yes. Okay, yes, you're Daniel right. Daniel Maldini and his but, debut. But this is my thing. There's no big guy up front, right? You have Leo well, and I, Rebic. I disagree with you. It's not based on Ibra at all, I think. I think it's actually based on Theo. And, and it's, the, and it's and and based Theo. on Benacer. It's no, not, no, no. I do. It's not. I mean, Ibrahimovic isn't going to give you. And it's it's not like they're just Ibrahim when Ibra's there they just charge him for him with long balls and whatever. No, no, no. no. Well, maybe if just give me a second. Yeah. So my my point is is that I feel like this game is developed on three people. Teo Hernandez is like just run. And now what you see is most people trying to figure out a way to stop Teo Hernandez. Okay. Then you've got Benacer in the middle, and I think that you don't notice Benacer's importance until he's absent, like this week when you had to see Chanaloglu instead. And then you see that the game is not directed from the middle the way that Benacer manages it. Then you look at the forward line and the reason why Pioli kept going with Piontek and not Leao which a lot of people were asking him to do before Ibra was because this man knows how to fill the spaces up front make, give you something special because otherwise what you had is for me two wide players now when you have Ibra it's almost like you have a body that you just sort of rotate around you've got Cas- Castellejo and Chanaloglu or whoever it is that you've got on other on the other side and then you've got Leao running off him and then it's just it's almost like just this solar eclipse like this, this sun in the middle and everything running around it and I think those three points if they're not there Milan are pretty much very very average so for me I just and if I'm thinking Sensi Barella Brozovic uh, Ericsson Lukaku Sanchez I'd be amazed if Milan won the derby I wouldn't be amazed I think Inter have better players that's not in doubt I mean Inter are second in the table Milan are not there's, there's there's a gulf in talent I think that Inter haven't played very well lately. They're missing one of their most important players up front. Yeah, um, Ericsson is not bedded in yet. I think it's a moment they could lose a game for sure. Yeah, and you're also playing a team that has a shutdown goalkeeper, whereas Inter are going to have a goalkeeper who's coming off possibly an injury, may not be 100%. Yeah. I'm assuming Andanovic is going to play, but obviously he didn't play in Udine. Um, Inter yeah, are the better team. Inter are the better team, no Doesn't question about but it. But they can incorporate a lot of talent into that midfield if they would decide to do all of it rather than maybe rely on... Uh, they might rely on an aggressive game, which I hope they don't, but if they actually use the talent that they've got, I think it'll be interesting to watch. Oh, it's definitely interesting to watch, yeah. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.